Hi, we're working on some more examples of de Moivre's theorem. So our first extra example here is to convert the complex number 2 root 2 minus 2 root 2i into polar form and then use de Moivre's theorem to calculate z to the fifth. So let's first convert that into polar form. Remember my equations, x squared plus y squared. Square root of that gives me the r. And theta is arctangent of y over x. And then sometimes you have to introduce the extra factor, uh, the extra term plus pi. You have to do that when the x is less than 0. So um, here my z is, my x is 2 root 2. My y is minus 2 root 2. So r is equal to x squared plus y squared. 2 root 2 squared is 4 times root 2 squared is 2. So 4 times 2 is 8. y is negative, root two, negative 2 root 2. So y squared is the same thing. r is 8 plus 8. The square root of 8 plus 8. The square root of 16 is 4. My theta is arctangent of y over x is negative 2 root 2 over 2 root 2. That's negative 1. And there's no fudge factor on this one because the x is positive. So there's no plus pi. Arctangent of negative 1, that's a common value that I remember, is negative pi over 4. If you work that out on your calculator, in degrees it'll say negative 45. If you have your calculator in radian mode, it'll say negative pi over 4. Um, but you shouldn't really need a calculator for that because that is a common value. And so that's negative pi over 4. That's still not in uh, the range that I like, which is 0 to uh, 2 pi. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 2 pi to that and get 7 pi over 4. So that's now in the range between 0 and 2 pi. So my z in polar form is 4e to the 7 pi over 4. So that's the answer to the first part of the problem. We've converted the complex number into polar form. De Moivre's theorem says we want to calculate z to the fifth, and we can do that by, remember, z to the n is equal to r to the n times cosine n theta plus i sine n theta. So that's how de Moivre's theorem applies to this one. z to the fifth is equal to r to the n, so that's 4 to the fifth, times cosine n theta. n is 5, theta is 7 pi over 4, so 35 pi over 4 plus i sine of 35 pi over 4. Remember that 35 over 4 came from n theta, which was 5 times 7 pi over 4. Something I forgot there was to include my i in the polar form. So let me put that in. That's 7 pi over 4 i. There's supposed to be an i in there. So I don't like the fact that 35 pi over 4 is not between 0 and 2 pi. So let me see if I can simplify that down. Uh, 35 pi over 4. If I subtract off 2 pi, 2 pi is 8 pi over 4. So that would give me 27 pi over 4. Subtract off another 2 pi. That would give me 19 pi over 4. Subtract off another 2 pi. Would give me 11 pi over 4. Still not in, in the range, but if I subtract off 2 pi again, that gives me 3 pi over 4. So this whole thing simplifies down a little bit. 4 to the fifth is 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 times 4. That's 1,024. Now the form of 35 pi over 4 between 0 and 2 pi is 3 pi over 4. So cosine of 3 pi over 4 plus 
I sine of 3 pi over 4. And to simplify that, it's helpful to draw a little unit circle and remember where 3 pi over 4 is. That's right there on the unit circle. 3 pi over 4 between pi over 2 and pi. And so the cosine and sine there are both root 2 over 2. You just got to figure out which one's positive and which one's negative. And because it's in the second quadrant, um, the x is negative, so that's negative root 2 over 2. The y is positive, so root 2 over 2. And so we can simplify this down a little bit. This is negative 512 root 2 over root 2, because we divide it by 2, plus 512 uh, root 2 i. And that's my answer. So let's recap what we did for that one. We were given a complex number in rectangular form. I took those as my x and y, and I plugged them into my formulas for r and theta to find the polar form. For the formula for theta, the x was less than 0, so I had to include the plus pi. Uh, sorry, the x was positive. I did not have to include the fudge factor. But when I took the arctangent, I got negative pi over 4. So I added on 2 pi to get it into the range 0 to 2 pi. So the polar form for that complex number is 4 e to the 7 pi over 4 i. Now to raise it up to the nth power, I'm going to use de Moivre's theorem. That says z to the n is r to the n cosine n theta plus i sine n theta. So theta was 7 pi over 4. The n was 5. So I get 35 pi over 4. Pretty nasty, so I sub subtract off two pi's at a time, a bunch of two pi's, get it down to 3 pi over 4, simplifies down to 3 pi over 4. I fill in the cosine and sine of 3 pi over 4, which I remember, those are common values on the unit circle there. And finally, I simplify it down, and I get my answer there.